I mean, we talked about impression a little bit ago. We're going to show a little bit more of the impressionism. Again, these are the big contributors. Uh, the Page. So again, you can see in the playing with the light and the uh, pseudo-realism um, of it. And again, it's just amazing to think this was kind of degenerate art over a period of time. But uh, considering this, these works are only really about 120, 130 years old. Here's a Van Gogh. I mean, you just kind of smell smell the springness in that. I mean, that's the thing that they were doing is they were kind of taking what they considered to be flat landscapes and bringing them out. Now, this is, looks like Spain, right? Oh, no, it must be southern Spain or southern France. Bob, you tell me wherever that is. Oh, Buona, maybe it's Italy. I don't know. Maybe it's um, uh, Catalonia. So here's Monet. Then at Lava Court, so this is part of the Seine River, so north, northern France. Must be, uh, well, no, I mean, that can't be northern France, look at those trees. So, I mean, I think you're getting the impression of what this is. This is a line also that uh, ran for a while when it started getting into the uh, Impressionist, um, yeah, Manet was big on this. Uh, the Impressionist um, portraits. So this was a different area because Impressionism was primarily landscape. Um, there, here's a good one. There's, I mean, you can see this is a perfect example of taking Impressionism and putting it into a portrait. Um, do you feel winter in that? It's a winter woman with a muff. No comments from me. So I, if you probably haven't noticed, I'm a huge, huge Impressionist art person. This is Pizarro, still life with Spanish peppers. So they were just playing with the traditional, oh, now this is beautiful. Henri Theodore Fontaine Latour. Still life, you got it right, still life with vase of hawthorn, bowl of cherries, Japanese bowl, and cup and saucer. Now that's a very detailed picture, I mean title. It's nice too. A ribbon in Normandy. And what do we got here? Oh, I've seen this in pictures. This is Corot. A Corot is another one that I like. Colors again. Thank you. I don't know if you can see the um, the, f the cloud colors with the light. The part of it is light, um, and then the dark behind. So the sun is hitting the edge of the clouds. Ernest Messonnier, Information, General Dussault and the Peasant, 1867. What's going on here? I have probably have something to do with Napoleon. An Information, Information. A peasant gives critical information to a Napoleonic military leader, General Dussault. The highly decorated, detailed men, rendering of the winter landscape and the Uniform then is an attempt in a matter of historical novel. Okay, so the kind of the deal here is, is they're kind of um, like, all right, everybody get together. We're going to pretend like like they're taking a picture. So this isn't like obviously what happened, but it's like, all right, everybody get back together. We're going to pretend like this is what happened. Um, so it's a um, kind of a portrayal of the actual event. All right, so this is most of their uh, impressionist art. It's really nice. Let's move on. So now we're in neoclassicism, which happened um, interestingly in the uh, late 18th century, which is the time that uh, America became America, the French Revolution, and there was just a lot of cultural change in, in you know, European type societies. So as with any big change, you've got change in art too, because those things seem to go hand in hand. So what you're seeing in this work, and I guess I should have probably showed you the older stuff earlier, is a real, uh, now this is a Turner. So, wow, this is a really expensive piece of art. Uh, it's a Turner, holy crap. Um, but you can see again, uh, I should have showed you the older stuff. You wouldn't see the detail in these, uh, they're popping the light out. Um, the light's coming out, it's the Renaissance. It's, it's we're thinking differently, we're, we're challenging things, we're not tired. I mean, look at this guy. 
look at this guy is alive. This dude is alive. I mean, he's contemplating what he's going to write in his book. And here's one. I mean, so this is kind of a snap, right? And then you got this woman who, you know, again, she's not stiff. They're not like, okay, stay there. Obviously, it took them a long time to paint this. So actually, this must have been very difficult because they're trying to make her look like she's, somebody said, Josephine, look up. And she looked up. Um, but how long does it take to do something like this? And it's actually not Josephine. It's Natalina Narkarova Golijovka ni Orotina. She sounds like a tennis woman from 1799. So you get what I'm saying. There's, looks like there's some hanky panky going in here. No. A family admiring a portrait of a lady in the interior. I don't know what he's got going on, but he's looking at that lady. Oh, he must be the the tailor or the dress designer. Madam, this is Maxie. This one looks like he's got something going on. A good deed is never forgotten. So again, um, pull back a little bit. Can you see the expressions here in the eyes? I mean, this guy, he's like totally worn out. Okay, so this is older stuff now, and you can see this is called Rococo, um, and it's from the early 1700s, and it's probably what I showed you first. So you can see, you know, there's color, but people are sort of two-dimensional. Um, it doesn't pop out at you like it did before, but again, with each generation, it gets more and more um, lifelike, I don't know. Um, and you'll see that as we get into the 16 and 1500s, where it's pretty much Madonna and child, Madonna and child, Madonna and child, baby Jesus, blah, blah, blah. As a matter of fact, here we go. Here we go, yeah. So we're now we're getting into the older stuff here. And this was pretty much it. It, it was like religious or Greek religious or, you know, uh, mythology. That's like they call it genre. So, I mean, here we go. There's a perfect example. Um... The Sacrifice of Isaac, 1659, by Pareda. Um, so there's two things going on. One is there, I mean, first of all, let's, let's face the fact that this is from 1639, and look how nice the colors are still. Okay, I'm sure it's been clean, but still. Um, and they're trying to tell a story. All of these things are trying to tell a story. Um, you know, St. Jerome in the wilderness. You know, I'm sure there's a whole story about that, but here, and this is what you usually see from the 14, 13, 14, 1500s. Um, this is later. It's just that whole Madonna and child, Madonna and child, Madonna and child. It's like, oh, what? how many Madonna and childs do you have on your wall? Um, now, this is interesting because that is a basket of flowers from 1615, so this was probably new at the time, too. Probably people are like, wait, where's your Madonna and child? So, okay, so this is probably where we should have started. You can see a lot of praying, a lot of two-dimensional, good color, but uh, there's another perfect example of what I'm talking about here. Madonna and a child. You know, and there's probably 10,000 Madonna and childs that were painted during that period. Now, here we have... Michel Suits, portrait of a gentleman, possibly a member of the Dutz family. So again, very um, kind of, I'm going to get my portrait painted, very um, two-dimensional. This is an old pilgrim. Hello, old pilgrim. So as we move now, you can see maybe how the colors start to change, how we move into more of a, uh, a vibrancy mode here. So again, early, early 1700s, still kind of young man with a flute. Doesn't look very happy. And then all of a sudden in here, here you go, late 1700s again, you're starting to get the color popping. We're in the Renaissance now. Not the Renaissance. The Enlightenment. Thank you. The Enlightenment. Look at these beautiful snuff boxes. So these are probably from, yeah, the 1760s. So this stuff was new art during the Revolution. Oh, this is a beautiful piece. Oh, look, that's a Napoleon. An oval snuff box with the portrait of Napoleon. Napoleon was a big dude in his day. <laughs> that was pretty that was pretty enlightening, wasn't it? Alright, so I think we've seen everything. I want to just go back and see if there's anything I missed.